In today's tutorial, let's do the vintage blossom dishcloth. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the same pattern. These are two different patterns but they're in fact the same thing. So what we have here in the first one here is Be My Valentine dishcloth. You can see it's got Valentine's colors. You can see that the outside looks like it's hearts and in this one here it's called the Vintage Blossom. You can see that they're slightly different colors but in actual fact the pattern is identical to each other. So we're gonna be working on this pattern. Also comes with the crochet diagram that you can see here and we're gonna be following this in a if you love crochet diagrams you can see that this is pretty easy to follow. I will warn you step number four we gotta do something slightly different than what's in the instruction here. We have to turn this around backwards in order to have these puffs then come out to the front of the project and we'll cover that when we get to number four. So with today's project I went up and I spoke to Daniel and we're gonna do something more vintage color. So we looked on Adobe we came up with these particular colors more of like a wine cream purples blues and we're gonna kind of create a 50s vintage theme today. So either one you're doing it's gonna be the same project. You just have to change up the colors to match whatever you prefer. So for today's project we are going to be focusing on four different colors. You can choose four different colors. Now because this is for the kitchen you're going to want cotton yarn. You don't want to use acrylic or anything other than cotton in the kitchen because you can use these as dishcloths, ornamental tea towels, all of those kind of things because they wash really easily and it is 100%. Let's begin our slip knot to start the center ring for this entire thing. So let's insert our hook and let's chain four. We're gonna create the center ring. So one, two, three and four and insert your hook into the beginning chain like so and yarn over and pull through that one and the other one to create the center ring. This straggler I want you to lay it around the ring as if it's part of the ring so when we go to crochet the next round it'll get stuck underneath so you'll never see the stopping and starting of this particular piece. In this pattern it says that chain three counts as a double crochet here and throughout. So whenever we start we're gonna chain three. This counts as a double crochet which makes sense because we're gonna do 11 double crochets around the center of the ring. So double crochet into the center of the ring leaving that straggler down on the top of the ring so it gets stuck underneath and I want you to double crochet a total of 11 times. So that was one, two and three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you can see I'm running out of space. So because it's around the ring I can move things around. So I was on nine. So let's go ten, eleven, Okay, so with the first chaining three that counts as a double crochet so I should be able to count 12 of these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Let's just join it to the beginning. Chain three at the top, slip stitch across and then that forms that. So what I want to do now is that I wanna finish this color off. So how I'm gonna finish the color off is how I'm gonna do it throughout. So watch, I'm gonna cut the string and I'm gonna pull that through and I'm just going to use this string and just weave it in and out of about an inch or so of the stitch work. So just go in and out and what you're going to do next time you're coming across this is that the stitches that you're going to apply over this will trap this underneath so it will be really good. You can also just leave a bit out and I'll show you how to do a darning needle if you wish to really uh, fasten that in permanently as well. So without further ado because you've covered this over you can get rid of that middle one so that you don't have any loose ends hanging out of your work. Go right down in and you're good to go. So let's move up to the next round. So let's take my next color and this is more of a wine color and I'm going to create a slip knot first and I'm just gonna go into any one of the single cro or double crochets that are there. So you can follow the chart as is or you can just follow my drift here. And I want you to attach it. So just attach it with a slip stitch and then chain three which counts as a double crochet. So for this entire uh, round all the way around is that I want you to come back into the same space where you joined, same stitch 
and double crochet and I want you to double crochet twice in each one of the stitches going all the way around. Okay, so this will expand the circle like this and please do that. So two double crochets in each stitch going all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and I have the last one and there's two double crochets in the final one of course because we're putting two in each one of the stitches and then I'm just gonna join this to with the top of the beginning chain three and I wanna fasten this off color and I want to uh, do it just like I showed you already before and when I come back I'm gonna start on the next color that's gonna be in my little list. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So let's begin my next color. I'm bringing blue back in. I've already assigned all the colors on my sheet of paper into what I wanted with my four colors and I'm gonna go into any one of the double crochets. You can just choose any one that is in there and I want you to attach it like I've shown you before. Okay, so just slip stitch it to attach it and then chain three which counts as a double crochet in the the rules of this particular pattern. So the next one is going to be two double crochets into the next stitch and in the next stitch it's just one double crochet. Okay, so the next one is two double crochets in the same stitch and the next one is one. Continue to do that same pattern going all the way around for this round. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm just following the same pattern of two into one and then one into the next. The final stitch if you're following the pattern should be two double crochets into the final stitch before joining it to the top of the beginning chain three. So I'm going to fasten off this yarn like I've shown you before and then bring back the next color for my next revolution. So let's begin my next color. So this one is going to be a bobble revolution of number four and I've kind of warned you about this one in the very beginning. So we've been crocheting around and around. Now bobbles, whenever you do bobbles, they naturally fall to the other side to create the, the bump on the other side. So it doesn't say to do this in the pattern but in order to get that, so if I bobble right now, the bobble is gonna appear on the back side which is when it's laying down, you're never gonna see it. So you need to turn your project backward and you can see all my tails are on the other side and I want you to attach into any one of the stitches. Okay, so just attach and we are gonna grow, uh, just attach and then we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. So on top of doing bobble work on this one we also have to do an expansion round as well so we have to add more extra stitches. So in this one what we're going to do is gonna have one double crochet standing by itself. The next one will have two double crochets in there so you got your expansion and the next one is a bobble. So how you do the bobbles is just like this. Watch. So going into the next stitch we're gonna do bobbles and they consist of five double crochets to kind of together. So we're gonna wrap the hook and going into the next stitch. Noticing that I'm putting this straggler down on top so I can lose it underneath and I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, pull through two and hold. I wanna get a total of continuing to do that until I get six of these on the hook. So just yarn over, same stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. Same one, wrap, same stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. So now I have four of the six that I need, pull through, pull through, pull through two and hold. And one more time. So now that you have six loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all six and you're gonna see how it just naturally pops out to the front side of the work. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna continue the growth going all the way around. So just the next stitch is one double crochet by itself and then the next one is two into the same one. So you have your expansion. So let's review this round one more time. Okay, so that's your expansion. The next one is a bobble. So let's wrap the hook into the next stitch. Pull through, pull through two and hold and you keep doing that until you get six loops on your hook. Okay. So here is my six now. You can see and then pull through all six like that and then start again. So the next one is a single cro or a double crochet by itself and the next one is two into the same one. I'm gonna review this one more time because I have to do it off camera anyway. Okay, so the next one is a bobble. So they're just looking for the five double crochets which equals six loops on the hook before you pull through. like so. Yarn over, pull through all six and then the next one is a single or double crochet by itself and then the next 
one is two into the same one. Continue that same pattern going all the way around and you're going to notice that the bobbles are starting to pop out on the, on the other side which is the good side of what you wanted. See? Told you. So I'm coming up to the end of the revolution and you should have a bobble done as your very final stitch. So I'm just keeping with the same rhythm and in the final stitch there should be a bobble. Okay, so that's how you would do this round. This one uh, is a kind of a fun round. It really starts to bring out the texture and you'll notice on the other side which is the good side that you'll have some really great definition of work. Pulling through all of them and then just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. I want you to fasten off and this is what it looks like on the other side. So you can see that you can got some really nice bobble work going on. Let's move along to and fasten this off and bring back the next color and then start row number five together. So let's start on with our next color. I'm bringing back my wine and I'm gonna go into any one of the stitches. So I've got it turned now that I can see the bobbles. So this is the front side of the work. So if you're looking at the other side and the bobbles are not there, that means it's the wrong side. So let's uh, begin and start and we're gonna go into any one of the stitches that are on the outside. You can follow the pattern exactly if you wish. Um, by just changing the locations like this it actually kind of makes it different and it makes it more round as well. So it's a, a completely personal choice. So let's begin by attaching and chaining up three which counts as a double crochet. So for this revolution it is really quite simple is that the next two are gonna be by themselves. They're double crochets and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So the next stitch two into the same one. So the repeat pattern on this whole round is that there's gonna be three standing by themselves and then two into the next. So let's do the repeat pattern. So you got one and you got two and three and then the next one will have two into the same one. So please do that same idea going all the way around in order to complete this round which is round number five. So I'm coming up all the way back around. So now all the last stitch is that I just have to make sure I put in two double crochets into the final stitch in order to make it work. Okay, so then you're just gonna join it to the top of the beginning, chain three like so and what I want you to do is fasten that off and weave in your ends and let's begin then row number six. So let's start on row number six. So you can attach it to any one of the double crochets going all the way around and just going in like so and then just attach. So just with the slip stitch and then chain three which counts as a double crochet. So for this round what we have going on is that there's going to be four double crochets in a row. So let's do the next three. So one, two and three. So the first chaining of three counts as one of the four by the way. And then the next uh, one is two double crochets into the same one. Okay so this whole revolution is really quite easy. So it's gonna be four in a row. So let's do that. So one, two, three and four and then the next one is two into the same one. So please do that same idea going all the way around. So I'm just finishing up this revolution. There's five stitches left and which makes sense because I just finished a two here. So then you're just going to continue with the same count. So you'll have four in a row by itself. And then the final stitch there will be two double crochets in the final. Just like this. Okay and we just want to join it to the top of the beginning chain three. So what I want you to do now is just fasten this off and I'll bring back the next color and the next color we're gonna start uh, forming what appears to be the heart shapes next. Okay I'm gonna bring back the purple. I'm gonna do purple hearts on mine. It's up to you what colors that you wish to do. So we're going to attach it to, and we're gonna create the foundation of the hearts. The hearts will not appear in this round but they are the foundation to get it started. We're gonna just insert to any one of the double crochets going all the way around to begin. Let's fasten that on. So just with the slip stitch chain three which counts as a double crochet. In the same stitch I want you to double crochet again followed by a chain one and then double crochet once again twice into the same stitch. So the heart, these are the, what is looking like the hearts at this moment. It just doesn't look like it. So it's gonna be two double crochets, a chain one and two double crochets. I want you to then chain two and I want you to skip to the next sixth. So skip over five. So one, 
two, three, four, five. Go to the six and I want you to reach over and double crochet twice. So one and two and then chain one and then one and two into the same one. So you're thinking okay that doesn't look like the pattern right now. Don't you worry because what's gonna happen in the next round is that we're gonna play in the front here which is gonna push these back and then it's only gonna expose what appears to be the heart shape. So remember what you do. Chain two once you got that done. Skip to the six one. So one, two, three, four, five, six and double crochet twice in the six one. Chain one and double crochet two more times in the same one to create the heart. So please do that same idea going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. You can see that I got spaces and these are the beginning of the hearts and I'm just doing my last set here. It's like a shell and once I get that one done I chain two and then just fasten on and attach to the beginning chain three way over here. So I want you to fasten this yarn off and then come back. We're gonna join this white back in and uh, that will then fill in the layers that you're seeing here that is not quite obvious yet. So uh, just uh, fasten this off and bring back the color that you used right here. So let me call your attention here. So we're about to move on to the next level. We've just done the purple which appears to be the red hearts here but we have to fill in the spaces in between the hearts and that's what we're about to do. But you're gonna notice something here is that in the diagram, if you're a diagram reader, you're going to notice and see four double crochets here and it appears the lines are going over number seven. That's because they are. So right here when you put in these double crochets you're going to push that chain two back. So when you're going to double crochet right here you'll push this chain two back out of the way. So then the white will then clearly come up over the top and then what's gonna happen is that you are gonna get your four in there. You're going to make sure you miss the ones that are right directly beside the hearts. Okay. You're gonna chain one and then just single crochet into the middle chain one of the hearts area and then chain one and then again just skip the first one and then go into the next four. Skip the next one, chain one and come into the center of the heart. Let's begin to do that next. So we're just gonna bring back the white and I want to attach this where it does say on the pattern. So this one I'm not gonna improvise on my own here. So we're gonna come into the middle one of a heart. So it's a chain one so look at it and it's the middle one. And I want you to attach your yarn slip with the slip stitch chain one and single crochet into the same one. And I'm gonna have to use a darning needle to hide this one in. So what I want to do is that I want to chain one and so now we have the space in between and what we want to do is that there's only three stitches that you can play in. So if you look at it this one here and this one here is the ones right beside the hearts you have to ignore those. So you just have to play within the three. The middle one of the three is gonna get two double crochets. So push in this chain back out of the way. You are just gonna skip one, go to the second over for one double crochet. The next one is gonna have two double crochets because it's the middle one of the three. Okay so you still are growing and then the next last double crochet that you're gonna play with here is just gonna be one double crochet by itself. So once you get those three done, chain one and single crochet to the one right in the middle. Just right around the space and then begin again. So chain one. Okay, you're gonna skip the first one, go to the second one over. Just push that purple chain out of the way. Okay, the first one's by itself. The next one there's gonna be two. And then the next one, or the, sorry that, that one's gonna have two. And then the next one is one by itself. Okay, so you got your three in there. You're converting it to four, chain one and then chain one or sorry single crochet to the middle of the heart, chain one and begin again. So skip the first one, push that purple back. So the first one's by itself. The next one's gonna have two. The next one's by itself. Chain one and then single crochet to the middle of the next heart. So please continue to do that all the way around. When you get all the way back around you're gonna chain one and then just join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with and please fasten this color off. We just have one more to go and uh, this is the final perimeter and in my case I think it might be blue and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm going to bring back the blue. It's the final revolution. You can join it onto anywhere. Let me just show you what you need to do. So in the chain one spaces you're gonna go right into a chain one space. In single crochets you're gonna go in single crochets. 
So it's just gonna attach to any one of the single crochets uh, to start. Just attach, chain one, single crochet. So I want you to just sit one single crochet in everything going around. Okay, so if it's a single crochet you're gonna go there. Okay, so in this case there's four. So the next stitch then there is a chain one space. So go right into the chain one space. Then the next one is a single crochet. Go into that one and then go into the single crochet in the next one on the other side. Okay, so it's just single crochets all the way around and just make sure you don't forget those chain one spaces that you have to uh, put one in between. So I'm about to hit another one there. So chain one space, single crochet into the middle one and chain one space on the other side of that. So continue to do that all the way around. So I'm just coming up all the way around. It's just one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So here's a gap space, middle and a gap space. So I'm going to just join it to the top of the beginning uh, single crochet or to the beginning single crochet and I want you to fasten off. When I come back I'm gonna show you how to weave in your ends so that if you're gonna actually use this. I see this as more decorative than anything but if you physically wanna use this I'm gonna show you how to weave in your ends using a darning needle so that they will not fall out as you're washing your dishes. So I'll be right back with the darning needle and this is what it looks like so far and this is what the back looks like with the woven in ends. So now it's time to weave in your ends using a darning needle. So I have a habit of bearing the ends as I go so therefore it makes it less work in the end. But if you're not one of those kind of people and you are gonna use this as a dishcloth, the weaving of it through a darning needle is the best way to go. It will never fall out then. So just put your strands on a, a, a needle and just only play within the same color. So you, if you go back and forth in the same fibers, Okay, so not just gap spaces but go right and separate fibers back and forth three times in different paths in the same area. You will end up having your yarn strands kind of tangle within each other and therefore they'll never fall out. Okay, so that was my third time. So now I can safely trim that down. So with the ends that you have, especially that one with the white was it that I got all the way around is that especially when you have stuff like this you wanna make sure that you get these in and using darning needle especially in the outsides because those are probably gonna have the most friction of anything. Okay so just putting darning needle on and just glide under the same color but making sure that you're separating some plies out with your darning needle. Um, I, t I have lost my good sharp one. It's probably hiding in a safe spot but back and forth three times in close to the same path but if you go in the exact same path they'll you'll just pull it out. So you have to make sure you always kinda just go in slightly different from where you came out and then go into a different set of fibers and back and forth three times will naturally hide in your yarn like this. And then you can safely cut it right down to the project like so. Okay, so what I want you to do is just do that and then I'll come back I'll just show you my finished example. So here's my finished example. You can see it looks like hearts on the outside. It's actually really quite nice. It's a fair size dishcloth I have to say and there's what the back looks like. All the ends are woven in and this is a really neat idea. So if you're looking for a great project for a dishcloth, something pretty or ornamental, you can do that. You can also um, if you want to put a loop on it and you can hang it from inside of your cabinet tree or the outside if you wish. It's very decorative. Um, you could even uh, do something as long as it's safe. Um, you hang something so it goes over the stove. Uh, uh, handle as well so that it's, again it's more decorative than anything but use common sense when it comes to anything in the kitchen of course. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon and I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Bye bye.